So, a couple of things before we demonstrate this so you know what's up with it. First, running backwards. So we do a lot of backing up, and if you're not careful, and you don't do this mechanically correctly, you will fall down and bonk your head on the floor, right? So most people, when they fall over backwards, they go whap, and they snap their head, and they whap it on the floor. This is rubber, still very uncomfortable, right? Right, so <laughs> when you run backwards, a couple of tips about running backwards, and we're gonna have everybody run backwards without a dog, right? One, footwear. Flip-flops and Crocs and sandals, not so good for running backwards, dangerous, right? You run out of them or you catch them easily. I wear Crocs all the time, and I run out of my Crocs when every time I try to run backwards, right? You can't keep them on. So, but a couple of things. Bend your knees, don't stand up straight. Bend your knees, lean forward. Uh, I have a tennis player friend, and when they're coaching tennis players, you ever watch a tennis player return a serve? They're like this, they're leaned forward. He says nose over toes. Right? So you keep your energy, your weight forward, and then your heels up. Do not step down on the heels. You run backwards on the balls of your feet, which is the front part of your feet. So when somebody stands up on their toes, that's the balls of your feet. You want to stay there. Try to keep your heels up off the ground. Every time you go back, if you step all the way down on your heel, it's easy to catch a heel, especially on rubber floors or uneven ground. A lump in the grass, you catch it, over you go. So lean forward, heels up and run backwards, right? Lean forward, heels up. My heels don't really touch the ground. And we run backwards, right? When you're practicing running backwards, right? Don't go fast in the beginning. Go slow, right? Don't worry about how fast you go. When you get an excited dog, people try to go too fast, and that's when they fall over, right? So start out slowly and do it correctly. So this is going to be a common theme, right? In a lot of our classes, we have different drills that we do without the dog. Dog training is a physical discipline, right? It's like anything else. No matter what, you're going to have to move and move your body, and it takes some body awareness and things like that. And so the better you are at that stuff, the better it's going to go. But when you put a dog in the picture, it's very hard to concentrate on your physical movements because you're trying to pay attention to the dog, and they're not always doing what you want them to do. So whatever things you can work on without the dog, I mentioned already holding the food and, drop and loading your, reloading out of your hand and how you hold the food, practice that without a dog. Just sit there and practice that. You don't need a dog for that kind of stuff. Running backwards, you can practice. We have a whole bunch of these drills in different classes. Our motivation class is full of different drills. We practice tug presentations for tug of war without a dog. And so it's like body memory. If somebody's learning a new discipline and I give you five things to pay attention to at once, you can't. Like your brain just doesn't, can't, you're off, right? And so isolating some skills is useful. So practicing, you may feel silly, but practicing running backwards without your dog will help you from falling down. You get much more efficient and much more comfortable as you do this, right? The other thing is when you're running backwards, pay attention to where you are in a given space. <laughs> you, when you're doing recall work with your dogs, make sure you leave yourself room to back up, right? So if I was working with my dog and I saw it got here and then started to come, oops, I don't really have very far to go before I'm out of space. I can only get a couple steps and then I'm gonna run into the wall. So if I was working here, I would say, oh look, my back's that way, that's not good. So I'd bring the dog around, I'd feed the dog this way, and then we'd start from here. Now I got the, all that room. And I move a little bit from here and now I know how much space I have behind me to back up. And then periodically glance over your shoulder and make sure there's nothing back there. <laughs> so you don't trip on something or run into things, right? And we do a lot of this backing up. This restrained recall is the first piece of it but when we're teaching dogs in play to bring toys back to us and things like that, I have a toy, give my puppy a toy, I run backwards so they come towards me, and then I play with them and I let them have it and I run backwards and they bring it to me. Well, you see, if you see our older dogs, if we give them a toy, they come right back to you with the toy because they've learned to bring it to me to start the game up. And so there, this is something we do kind of repetitively uh, when we're interacting with dogs. So a little practice goes a long way.